Good evening YouTube. Uh, Anna Cantavad, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, has a really interesting video up, which I will link to here, uh, about the black blocks at the G20 protests. Uh, do go and watch the video and, you know, subscribe to Anna Cantavad. He's someone I've found recently and is really making me think. So, thank you, Anna Cantavad. Um, the black blocks are groups on protests who tend to dress in black so they're hard to tell apart who engage in violent direct action I suppose you you would call it. They're the ones at the protests who are chucking things through windows and so on. I think part of it is within the black blocks there are different groups and people doing things for different reasons. There are doubtless some people there who are doing it just for shits and giggles because they like you know causing a bit of havoc and some who honestly think that's the way to achieve a better society. I think that's rather misguided. It goes back, I think, to um, propaganda of the deed, uh, as, it, as it was called back in the day, which often ended up being propaganda of the dead. Um, anarchist groups do have a history of terror. I mean, it, it was um, McKinley was assassinated by uh, um, someone who called himself an anarchist, although I think he was actually generally seen as a bit of a nutter by anarchist groups. But yeah, there is a history of anarchist terrorism. I think that has something of a baleful effect because it means you end up with groups today trying to outdo each other with their militancy. And I don't think this is just within anarchism, but broadly within the sort of anti-globalization movements. You 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 see that. Yeah, like oh I'm yeah, you know, so militant and so on. Um, and you know they're they're trying to stick it to the man. And I actually don't think the police help themselves in, in that. Now, um, I'm sure most police are, are you know, honest and, and whatever and aren't looking to go and cause problems. But you only need one or two bad eggs to, to get things to kick off. Um, and they're not doing enough, certainly in the British scene, I think, to, to restrain those bad eggs. And then when you've got people on both sides who are expecting confrontation, well, surprise, surprise, you get confrontation. I think the way the, the, the police go on with um, kettling, where they pin people into an area until they're so tired they just want to go home, um, is, is an unfortunate tactic to use. Because, you know, obviously that's, that is a highly confrontational tactic. Um, you know, and it goes on and goes on. Um, and it means that the peaceful protesters who are going to dilute that lot are less likely to turn up. Um, I, I find that problematic. Now, you do get some who honestly think they're trying to smash the system. Um, and think that in some way they're usefully building for um, for the general strike that will change society or, or whatever. The anarchists I know who I have respect for, who I think are actually doing something to improve society, you know, they may, I know a few, and they may, yeah, they do go along to you know, protests and planning meetings for protests. But instead of spending all of their time in planning meetings, they're out going and doing something useful. They're the ones volunteering with civil society groups, with citizens groups, and usually working with the people no one else wants to. Uh, quite often it's immigrants, actually. Um, the problem with, well, one of the thing, with it, reasons I think it's self-defeating to do the violence and so on is clearly, I don't think, society, and I'm not sure I would want some sort of anarchist revolution, but from their point of view, society isn't ripe for it. Clearly, they keep trying it, but they're not getting any support, precisely because they're not prepared to organise. Uh, I guess they, that, you know, in the same way that the that anarchism, I think I'm right in saying, lost some of its support when the trades union started um, organising and actually achieving victories and improving things for people. As the as globalisation has come on and the unions have seemed to have been co-opted in a way by the state, there is more of a desire to uh, yeah, to push for a different way of doing things. But they're still not you know not willing. You know you don't necessarily have to have the organisation of you know a formal trade union, but you need some kind of organisation. And quite often it's just people getting together to organise the next protest. Um, I mentioned that, so I went on a protest in 2006, so it was when Israel was going into Lebanon, uh, very heavy-handedly, 
and shall we say without due care and attention as to where it was dropping its bombs and actually walked off the protest because there were people holding up signs that said we are all Hezbollah now um, well I'm certainly not I, I want nothing to do with them and I didn't at the time um, and of course those, those signs aren't trying to aren't held by groups that are trying to build some sort of mass movement they're held up by groups that are trying to attract members, people who are already close to them philosophically and who want more you know, members who are close to them to start buying the party newspaper or whatever it is. And, and I, I, yeah, I think possibly something similar happens with some of the black blocs trying to outdo each other with their militancy. Um, you, you saw this with the, with the protests against the Iraq war which could have done rather more to uh, build a broader awareness of, of foreign defence actions. Instead sort of fizzled out a bit and I, I yeah, well you can see where I'm going with this, I don't, I think the leadership you know, were, were trying to pretend it was something it wasn't because yes there were a lot of people there who opposed the war but they didn't all share one um, ideology, you know people were up, bigging up this the big 2000 and two protests, or, no, when was it, 2004, I forget, where a million and some people went, precisely because there were all kinds of people there. Well, you can't tell me that the, you know, tweed-suited person who came down in a Land Rover with a Labrador in the back is about to be going, yeah, smash the state. Um, I mean, I think it was Mick McGuire who said about Arthur Scargill, he mistakes a mass meeting for a mass movement. What is, not everybody at these things agree. Um, they just have the only thing they have in common is opposition to something or a desire to, to voice something. Um, where I'm going with this is these sing the single issues are very easy to, to go, yeah, this is bad, this is wrong. But I think it's better if people actually join a political party or set their own one, one up rather than just doing the single issue stuff. Yes, there are problems with political parties, God, I know. Um, but if more people joined, in, you know, and got involved, that could help to remediate, you know, improve that. Um, but always going for the single issue thing uh, doesn't work so much. So that was a little rambling, but Anacantavad, again, I hope I pronounced that correctly, uh, really interesting video, so thank you. I'm Landon Cole, and I'll see you next time.